and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is uh, stormy again, Sunday, August the 21st, and we're having another round of storms here in East Tennessee. I'm not going to complain too much though because we're just sobby wet and Kentucky, you know, I don't know, they don't stand a chance. Anyway, let me get caught up with you all here. I am Kelly. This is ifyouhaveanegg.com. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, the power is going to stay on. It's already been off once. So, it was weird. We had a storm. The power was on. Storm went away. Hello, John from home base. Storm went away, and uh, sun came out. Power went off. But now it looks like it's going to storm again. Okay, let me get caught up to you all here. But hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, if you're brand new, let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you. And for some reason, I can't get on the live yet. Let me see if I can get on here with you all so I can see everything that you all are saying. Um, yeah, so, you know, weird things happen with storms and weird things happen with Facebook. So, such is life. And this is live. Hello, Carol Lou. So, go ahead and keep commenting. I'm going to try and get on here live with you all. Um, hello, Sandra from Demons Ferry. Do not know why I can't see what you all see. Anyway, this is chat number 285 and it is titled Journey to Learning to Say No. And hello, Penny. And maybe I should have just said no to the storms. Just have, just kidding. Okay, so let's see if I can get on here with you all. But let me know um, that you're here. Yay, and I'm here with you now. Hooray, finally. Okay, so let me go back and catch everybody that I missed. So I did say hello to Lisa and Carol Lou. Um, oh, and Carol said it's storming in Pittsburgh. I already said hello to Sandra. Hello, Vicki. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Penny. Hello, Orlando Debbie. Hello, Stacy. Mary in Stormy Pittsburgh, Sylvia and Linda from Rock Island, Illinois, and Sherry sneaking in from Cape Coral, and they, oh, they have distant thunder. So is it rain? Is it storming everywhere? And hello, Rita. Yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of the rain, um, and I know at some point I'm going to be wishing for it because several of you all commented that you are in drought areas and that you're only allowed to water like on even days or odd days because y'all are y'all are missing so much rain. Hello, oh, hello, Franny from Boston. It's good to see you. Um, and hello, um, Yoli from um, Indiana. Am I saying that correctly? Is it Yoli? Good to see you. So if you're brand new, just let us know because we would love to welcome you. And hello, Lynn. So again, fingers crossed that everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. Um, power's already been off once. Just going to say up front that if the power does go off again, if it starts storming again and the power goes off, the camera that I use will keep recording and you will just have to watch it later. Hello, Katie. So you can watch it later. Um, if, if it does storm, you can watch it on YouTube. It's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg or at the end of every single live chat, I do post it on Facebook. So if we get cut off, you'll just have to watch it there. But fingers crossed we are done with the big storms. Um, we have, um, yeah, good, good. I did say Yoli correctly. So yeah, so fingers crossed we're going to be through this. Okay. Okay. And Sylvia's gonna have to watch later on the replay. So I guess Sylvia's gotta go somewhere, but that is, that's okay. That is a-okay. So today is Sunday, August the 21st. We were hoping for no storms here in East Tennessee. Already had one today, um, but it was fast. It was a really fast one. And it's funny because the power did not go out until the sun came back out for a few minutes, but it's looking kind of gloomy outside again today. And I noticed on the radar that right in the middle of the chat, there's a big old fat red mark that's going to come right over the top of us. So we're just going to all wish it on away and hope that it goes away fast. Okay, so we are winding down August somehow already. We are winding down our summer of savings. We're going to talk about that only one more time in the second half of tonight's chat. Um, if you are new with us, we do an hour long chat. We do that here live on Facebook every, uh, try to every single Sunday night. Hello, Sandy. And then it's shown later. It's going to be, you know, always is available on replay later on Facebook or on YouTube. Again, that is just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. And hello, Vicki from St. Louis. Um, we'd love to say hello to each other. So if you are just joining us, please do um, shout out. If you're brand new, let us know because we would all love to welcome you. Uh, but we do try to do this every single Sunday night. So for the first 30 minutes, we cover whatever the WW topic was for the prior week. And then in the second half, we do something fun. Um, the fun is still fun because we're going to find out how much I saved this summer in the second half. Yeah. So if you can't stay with us, you're going to want to go back and watch this later on replay just to see, watch it on demand so that you can see how much I saved this summer during our summer of savings. Um, but for today, 
It is August. We are already somehow sliding down the hill um, in August. A lot of you all, if your teachers have already gone back to school, a lot of the kids have already gone back. I think everybody now here in um, in Knoxville, here in East Tennessee, I think everybody's already back to school. Hello, Ken. Um, so they are, yeah, they are back at it. Um, but the news for August, I did want to go ahead and let you all know something. Um, I just have one bit of news this week. Last week, we only talked about the fact that the wellness winds are going away. I have not heard what's going to happen with them. Um, you know, if they're going to be back, when they're going to be back, when that's going to happen. Um, let me just make sure that this is the right direction, and I don't think it was. Um, can y'all hear me any better or worse? Because I can't, now I can't decide if that was the right direction or not. Um, but anyway, so we talked last week, the news for last week was talking about the wellness winds and hello Merlene from Florida. And did I just miss somebody? Hold on, Vicki got Kim, yeah, and Merlene. Um, so last week we were talking about the wellness winds program winding down. So that that is coming to an end. This week though, some fun news, and I don't know how many of you all know D. so um we have a lady in our group named d and she has her own she has her own chat that she does um called dish with d she does have a youtube channel and she has her own facebook page so who knows how many of you all already know d so just give me a just say hey i already know d if you know her so had some fun news for d and i have not found it yet i've not been able to look at it i've looked at two different stores and i think i've missed it just because of the date that was on it but d um was actually featured in Women's World magazine in the August 1st, 2022 issue. So if you happen to find an August 1st, 2022, 2022, if you happen to find one of those on the shelf, we would love to see what the, I'd love to see what the inside of it looks like. So sadly you can't access it online. So you, yeah, and several of you all, so several of you all already know who D is. Oh, and Carol saw it. Carol, do you actually have a copy of it? Because I would love to see the inside of it. I have not gotten to see the actual article. I've seen you know some little pictures that people have taken of themselves with it but i haven't actually seen the article itself and i've not found a, um, a back issue yet um but if you find it i'd love for you to share the insides because i would love to see that but she did so d was featured in women's world for that week um with her article entitled the carb that burns fat fast the carb that burns fat fast dying to see what it says of course she won't toot her own horn you know and show you know show us a picture of it sherry yeah i'd love to see a picture of it um but so proud of you d for your accomplishments um and you are rocking that 105 pound weight loss so she has lost more than 105 pounds and that was a well-deserved shout out from women's world magazine um yeah for her so congratulations d actually d gets extra bravo stickers so if y'all see d this week let her know she got extra bravo stickers during our chat um anyway super awesome and over 105 pounds lost so she's already she's lost over 105 pounds hello deanna and apparently it cured her sleep apnea so she's not having to do anything for her sleep apnea again anyway if you ha happen to have a copy of the august 1st edition of uh, women's world magazine i would love to see the article um that features um our very own d so yeah and if y'all see her tell her congratulations okay so that's my little bit of news for August. I'm gonna talk fast just in case we do have a storm. I know I always talk fast, I always do, but I'm gonna talk even faster just in case we do have a storm. Just know if you are just joining us, if it starts storming again, which the weatherman predicts that it is, the power has already been off here once at Casey Kitchen Center. I'm anticipating if the if the, the size storm comes through that they're, they're talking about, um, calm down first of all i'm fine i'm okay i'm inside of a sturdy building this building has been standing here since the 1880s so i am i'm a-okay and hello melinda so calm down about my safety i promise i will not go running outside if it's lightning or there's a tornado or anything so everybody just be calm about that i just wanted to say out loud if the power goes off then you will have to watch the rest of this later on demand um because the camera that i use will be recording and you can watch it later on facebook or again on youtube it's just youtube.com search if you have an egg okay so this month for the entire month of august we've been talking about the journey and this is chat number 285 oh no carol says the lights are flickering there no 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 um only thing is if you watch it later on demand it'll be in the dark but that's okay it's okay i'm usually in the dark and hello leslie from edmonton alberta canada it's good to see you um yeah, but this is chat number 285, and it is titled Journey to Learning to Say No. And hello, Loretta. So tonight, we're going to be talking, still be talking about journeys, but we're going to be talking about saying no, no. 
And I just have to make a side comment that Bo, so y'all already know granddaughter number one is Alyssa. Granddaughter number two is Bo, and she is so not her sister. Aloha, Aloha Kathy. And so now when, when she starts to do something that she's not supposed to do, she automatically starts shaking her head. No, she's already telling you no. Already telling you no. And no, Debbie, we do not have any emergency lots. The building's, I don't know, how old is that? 1880s, whatever. No, there are no emergency lots. Um, anyway, and yes, Leslie, let's see. Oh, yeah, Melinda's chatting with Leslie. Very good, very good. But anyway, so we're going to be talking about how you can do this, how you can say no. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So the whole month of August, we're talking about the journey. This is another part on that journey. And remember, it is your journey. Not my journey, not her journey or his journey, okay? It's your journey, so just keep all of this relative to you. But last week, we were talking about more go-to foods, and you all talked more last week than you've ever talked, okay? So I need to know, I need to know who sat their bottom in a chair last week. So if you sat your bottom in a little in a little chair and went to a an actual workshop last week, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, we just do thumbs ups. If you got to go, if you were able to attend a WW workshop, give me a thumbs up during the lives. If you're watching it later on demand, you can just do the little thumb emoji. And Linda's chair was in a, was her little bottom was in a green chair again. Or if you attended a Zoom workshop last week, so if you're digital only and you um, went to a Zoom, Zoom workshop, give me a thumbs up. Oh, and Melinda's house was built in 1889, 100 years before she was born. Wow, that's super cool. That is so cool. The graveyard out here, all of the graves are from the um, late 1800s and early 1900s. So it's super cool to come visit too. Okay, and then hearts. If you attended here with us live last week or if you watched later on demand. So lots of thumbs ups and hearts. Lots of comments. Very good, guys. So congratulations. Here are your Bravo stickers to everyone who had their bottom in a chair or who watched with us here um, last week and hopefully is going to get to stay here this week. It's looking a little dark outside, not making any promises, just looking dark. And hello, Karen, good to see you too. Okay, so bravo to everybody who participated last week. And you all talked a lot last week. So last week we were talking about more go-to foods and we already, <laughs> I'm sorry, Debbie said graveyard? Nope. Gotta tell you a funny story, Debbie. Okay, so this story's for all of y'all, but especially for Debbie. There is a graveyard out back where I work at every day. And we have this little access area that supposedly goes to like a French drain. I can't remember what they said it was called, but it has, it's boarded up. We say that it goes underneath the graveyard. We say that it's a crypt that goes underneath the graveyard. We don't know, we've never been in it. But one, there was one day last week, we heard a crashing noise and that board, that big piece of plywood had come off the wall and it was laying over on one of our displays and nobody had been down there. Anyway, super freaky. Okay, so last week we were talking about food and we talked, so our fearless leader Gwen, my fearless leader Gwen at our in-person workshops had said that when you talk about food, all of a sudden everybody's listening ears are on. You know, they're like, what food, food? We're gonna talk about food? We're not talking about exercise. We're not talking about sleep. We're talking about food. Do, 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 do. All of a sudden, you know, everybody, you've got everybody's full attention. And she was correct. We probably had more comments. I should have gone back and counted them. Um, but we had, um, ooh, and Carol says her first apartment had a ghost. As long as her friendly ghost, that's okay. Um, but we had more people talking last week, more people talking during the chat and more people talking after, I think, I think Gwen's right, just because we were talking about food. Um, so last week we were saying, talking about the fact that the new W, and it's not new, I keep calling it new. It's just the newest, the latest WW um, personal points program. Um, that Gone are the days of one size fits all meals. So it can be individualized every to every person, to every meal, to every whatever. It can be totally, totally personalized for, you know, for each time that you start to eat something. Um, and it, I mean, it's so, I don't know, it's just so amazing. I think it's so amazing the choices that we get now. Um, and so last week we were talking again about our go-to foods. And so I asked you to think about some more go-to foods and some more things that you just, you know, keep on hand. And so we were talking about not putting ourselves in a food jail, because remember, if you put yourself in a food jail, you're going to spend all of your time deciding what to eat when you break out. So don't do that. I wanted you to think about what you would rather spend your points on and then try to figure out how to eat, you know, something else. For me, that was non fat plain Greek yogurt. It's great as sour cream. It's great to make 
uh, cream cheese. It's great for a lot of things, but I, I just, I gave up a long time ago trying to flavor my own non-fat plain Greek yogurt. You know, I'd rather just spend two points and buy it already made because it's, it's going to taste better anyway. So I wanted you to think about things like that. Um, and I wanted you to think about things that you can fill in the blank and say, I love blank so much. I could literally eat it every single day. Um, that is a go-to food. So last week's homework was hashtag my food journey. And we were talking about our individual, our individual journeys and our individual, you know, um, favorite foods and things like that. So I wanted you to come up with three more, because we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but three more go-to foods on your journey. And they didn't even have to be zero point foods. Okay. Most everybody picked a zero point food, not everybody, but most everybody picked zero point foods. They don't have to be. It's just three things that you know, you need. Like for me, the two point yogurt, gotta have it. You know, I need, I keep it in the refrigerator. I have to. Um, so let's see how you did on your homework last week. It was hashtag my food journey. And so last week, so Vicki said she makes sure she keeps Sargento cheese sticks, which are not zero points for anybody. Okay. But I also keep those. So Vicki, it was funny. Your, your list mirrored things that I already have. So Vicki said she keeps Sargento cheese sticks, eggs, and salad veggies. I always have all three of those. I always have some kind of Sargento cheese sticks always unless john comes in finds them and eats them when he's here to visit um eggs always have eggs and i always have something that i could whip together for a salad and if we have time in the second half i'll show you my salad for next week uh, mary keeps eggs hmm. eggs again lunch meat and grape tomatoes she always keeps those that's a meal in itself so whenever she needs it mary's already got a meal because she's got eggs lunch meat and grape tomatoes at all times and then caroline said eggs Hmm, I'm seeing a theme here, ha ha ha. Um, salad and fruit. And she was commenting all the way from Spain. So she's serious about those go-to foods. Um, but I would love for y'all to still co keep commenting about what your go-to foods are. Sometimes people don't realize, they don't, you know, they don't realize, oh, you know, to be a, a go-to food, it doesn't have to be zero points. And they love seeing um, what y'all comment because, you know, it gives you ideas sometimes. Like, uh, let's see, Sylvia was talking about um, refried fat-free beans. Hadn't thought to keep those on hand, but she was talking about what she does with them. I think that's another one that I'm going to add to my staples. But bravo to everyone. Ooh, Kelly said a green goddess salad. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. But um, bravo to everyone who did their homework last week. Keep chatting about it. You know, there's lots of ideas. We didn't, we didn't come up with everything by any means. This week, though, we are talking about our journey and learning how to say no. Okay. Ooh, it's easier for some of us than it is for others. So if I told you that learning to say no really means finding ways to say yes, would you agree or disagree with me? And Lori says, pinto or black beans, la banderita tortillas, eggs, and Velveeta. Oh yeah, Velveeta slices. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, that sounds good. And Leslie says, yogurt, cheese, and avocados, and chicken. It says dot, 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 and chicken. Okay, so if I told you that learning to say no really means finding ways to say yes, would you agree or disagree with me? Or just shake your head if you think I didn't have enough coffee today. If that statement didn't make any sense, then you just think I didn't have enough coffee. Okay, so Tuesday night during our in-person workshop, we spent a lot of time commiserating about times that we had to say no about something, even if we didn't, even if we didn't want to say no. Okay, and then we spent even more time realizing how it helped us to say yes. And at first I thought, what? You know, no, there are times that I don't want to say no. What do you mean? What do you mean that's going to help me to say yes? So let's find out how. Okay, first thing, when someone or something wants more time than you have available. So I would, I would have to say that for the most part, when we need to say no, it's probably a time issue. So... <clears throat> You know, when someone or something wants more time than you have available, this could literally be as simple as a request to collect money for flowers for a neighbor, or it could be as emotionally complicated as a toddler who wants your attention when there is water pouring out from underneath your cabinet, okay? And then you're just going to have to trust me. I know both of these from experience. So saying no to head up the flower committee this time, that allowed, so my friend Jackie had to say no. We had um, the parent of someone in our loft in our loft building passed away. Normally, Jackie takes care of the she takes care of collecting money, ordering the flowers, and having it sent to them. But Jackie saying no this time 
wasn't hateful. It didn't mean she didn't love her neighbor. Didn't mean that she didn't care about them. But by saying no this time um, to, com to completing, it, it allowed Jackie to say yes to completing a project that she had at work. And it was on a deadline and she had to focus on that that day. She couldn't even take, you know, didn't, needed to say no. I'm not, I can't even take the time to message all of these neighbors because there's, you know, it's like a 20 something person text thing and, you know, everything that's involved in that. So it allowed her to say yes to completing her project on time, on deadline. Um, and it allowed her to say yes to allowing another neighbor to, to meet some new families while they were taking up the money. Okay. So her no turned into two yeses in two, you know, in two other ways. And then last week, a gentle no to Alyssa um, asking to play while I was on my hands and knees trying to figure out why water was pouring out from underneath Casey's um, kitchen sink allowed me to say yes to getting the situation under control before she had any water damage. So as much as Alyssa did not want me to say no, telling her no and explaining why I was telling her no did leave me enough time to figure it out, get it stopped, and she had no damage in her cabinets, and we were able to get a hold of somebody who could get a plumber out there pretty quick to get it taken care of. So sometimes saying no to one thing lets you say yes to another thing, okay? And it might be something simple, and it might be something really emotionally complicated like telling your four-year-old grandchild no that you can't come play, you know, because something else is going on. Okay, for times when you really want to say yes, and that is me. So times that you really want to say yes, but you know that you should say no. Okay. I always want to say yes all the time. I rarely ever want to say no. Okay. So for times that you really want to say yes, but you know, you probably should say no. Um, this one's tough for me and you want to do, I want to do whatever it is, or if I feel obligated to help, listen, do whatever it is, but I know deep down, deep down that I probably should say no this time. Um, I ended up with a cat last week. That's how I ended up with a cat last week. So it was a cute, cute, cute little orange and white kitten. His little orange and white face was pleading with me. He was missing half of his tail, but it was not a new injury or I would have immediately scooped him up. You know, it was it was a healed healed thing. Um, but he was pleading with me desperately the entire way home. I even tried to give him to a homeless man <laughs> who was pushing a buggy. I was like, hey, do you need a cat? And this cat's following me. Do you need a cat? And he just looked at me and he goes, do I look like I need a cat? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You might need a cat. But anyway, it took every bit of my strength to say no to Casey because Casey was like, oh, kitty, I want it to say no to Alyssa because she immediately showed Alyssa the picture of the cat as if Alyssa was going to say, oh, I want a cat. So I said no to both of them and I had to say no to myself. He was so cute. Now, he did temporarily come into our home, even though John is deathly allergic to cats. He temporarily came in. But <clears throat> guess what? Yeah. And see, Deanna, you people are blessed that can say no to everything. I cannot. Um, but guess what? So me saying no, we are not keeping this cat. It led, it, it let me say yes to a beautiful young college girl who was looking for her first cat. Okay. And he was perfect. He was perfect for her. He needed some TLC. He was a little wormy. He was a little flea ridden. Not too bad. Not too bad. Again, missing a half a tail. You know, he needed a little TLC and she desperately wanted a kitty cat. It was, it was, he was her, he's her very first kitty cat and it was a yes made in heaven. Okay. So FYI, his new name is Rocky. I had named him Homie because he was a homeless cat and I tried to give him to a homeless man. Um, but his new name is Rocky for Rocky Top because he's orange and white and she goes to the University of Tennessee. And now he has a clean bill of health and the sweetest little bow tie collar. I mean, it was the picture she sent was adorable. But see, if I had not said no to, if I had said yes, like I, I wanted to say yes, okay, then John wouldn't have been able to go into Casey's house. Casey would have had a four-year-old, a 10-month-old, a cat, Dusty, sharing Dusty, John not being able to come in. I mean, that that yes would have just been a disaster. But me saying no allowed this sweet little girl, you know, now she has her first cat. And he loves her and he looks very happy. Okay, and then when you didn't want to say yes to start with, okay? So Deanna doesn't want to say yes to start with, okay? Yeah, Barbara says she doesn't have no in her vocabulary. Obviously, I don't either, okay? <laughs> and Yoli says she's like me, is trying to 
tries hard, but is, has to, you know, needs to try harder. So if you didn't want to say yes to start with, which occasionally happens, so you would think that saying no when you really don't want to do whatever it is would be easy, wouldn't you? Okay, so for those of you like Deanna that it comes naturally to, and Lynn says as she gets older that saying no is, is coming, that she's finding it, you know, easier. It's coming, she can say no more often. Um, those of you who it comes naturally to, you have a gift, okay? I'm not one of those people. I do not, I do not possess that gift. But learning to take a breath and say no, like no thank you. Um, when someone offers you food that you really didn't want or didn't plan for or breathe again, no. Um, to going to an event that you really don't care anything about, it can lead to a yeah. Hello, Kathy. It can lead to a yet yeah, a like yes. Uh, let's do lunch. No, I can't do lunch today, or I can't eat. You know, can't enjoy whatever it is that you brought today. But how about yes? Let's go to lunch another day, and you can pick like you us pick where you where you can go that's maybe a better on the plan or better points or easier for you to count or more convenient that day or yes uh why don't we take that trip to the new joann's to shop for yarn when we're both off from work so saying no if we just think about it you know no doesn't just mean no okay no means not right now or not this time or not this specific event or food or feeling or helpfulness or cat or whatever, but it can lead to a yes. So I'm gonna try really hard this week to work on my no's turning into yeses. So what, what things am I gonna have to say no to, but then what does that allow me to say yes to on the other end, okay? So that's what I want you to do for your homework. Your homework for this week is hashtag my no no. So remember Bo, no, 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 no. You know, Bo is no, no while she's saying yes, sticking things in her mouth. So your homework for this week is my no, no journey. So hashtag M-Y-N-O-N-O-J-O-U-R-N-E-Y. -N -N -E so my no, no journey. So this week I want you to muster up some strength, okay? To firmly, but with love, say no, no to someone or something so that you can say yes to something else, okay? And then of course I want you to top it, snap it, take a picture of it, write it down, let us know. Thank you very much, Lynn, for posting that. Let us know what it was, what you said no to, and if you already know what it allowed you to, to say yes to, go ahead and share that with us too. I'm serious when I tell you all, if you do, when you do your homework, I know that it will help you, so it helps me to say, this is what I'm gonna do and do my homework. But when you all do your homework and you post it, it not only helps you, but it helps other people. We have a lot of people that are that are not chatty, okay? We have a lot of people who don't talk as much as I do. We have a lot of people who don't talk as much as you all do, and they're you know either a little bit nervous to share, or um, you know they don't, um, so far, Kathy, so good. It's looking really dark, but so far, so good. So again, fingers crossed. Um, but we have a lot of people that are just, you know, they're just not as outgoing and they're kind of, you know, just kind of sitting in the background waiting to see everybody else is going to say, please do your homework. That's not just for me. Okay. So doing your homework is not just something to entertain me. Okay. I have lots of things to entertain me, but doing your homework, I think will help you. I think it's going to help you on your journey, but I promise you, even if they don't say, even if they don't tell you, it will help someone else. Um, I've seen so many people go back later and thank somebody and say, you know, Thank you for posting that it was okay to have Sargento cheese in your um, in your crisper drawer. Thank you for saying that. I didn't think I could ever have string cheese again, or I didn't think I could ever have Colby Jack cheese again. Or, you know, thank you for talking about, you know, fat-free refried beans. I never would have known. You know, and you might not ever hear from them, but please do, I'm serious, doing your homework, it's going to help you, but it'll help them too. So, everybody do your homework. Um, it is time for the second half of the chat. Whew, so let's take a break, everybody. Where are my water notification people? So everybody go ahead and get your drink of water. I'm gonna go ahead and get mine. Yes, thank you, there is Sandra. So as we get ready for the second half of tonight's chat, everybody go ahead and get a drink of water. Um, I hope that you all are um, preparing yeah, okay, that's why Deanna posts her dinner pics because her dinner pictures because it helps her, but it always, always helps somebody else. Like today, Deanna posted about shepherd's pie, and so just like me, now who else is thinking about shepherd's pie? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know, lots of us. Okay, so in the second half of tonight's chat, we're gonna be talking about the summer of savings and wrapping it up. Um, if you're new to this, we do two halves of the chat. The first half is the classroom portion of whatever WW talked about the week before. The second half is usually something fun. Tonight we are wrapping up um, the summer of savings. So it's not fun fun, but it's fun. I've had a good time this summer. So let's see. Oh, Phyllis is new. Hello, Phyllis. Hello and welcome. So Phyllis is new and she wants to know where to post these things. So Phyllis, when you do your homework, if you are on the If You Have an Egg page right now, you can post your homework here. Or if you would like to join our If You Have an Egg um, Facebook group, and that is a closed group so that you can make private comments and the whole world's not going to see them. It's just other WW people that we've let in. Um, Carol or someone um, can probably share or Debbie can share that link for you so that you can join that. You can do your homework there. If you could, please either use the hashtag for the homework or do the at symbol um, and do um, here you would do at um, if you have an egg. If you post on Instagram, it would be at if you have an egg. If you did it on connect, it's at if you have an egg or if you are in our Facebook group, I usually see those. Um, but yeah, so welcome. It is so nice to meet you and I hope you will do your homework. So the second half of tonight's chat, we are winding down this summer of savings and Phyllis, I hope that you can, you know, can go back and watch some previous chats. So this is, and thank you, Carol, for posting that. So this is chat number, um, 285 so that means that there are 284 of these that you do not have to go back and watch all at the same time but if you go back if you do have time you can either listen to them or watch them if you go back and listen to like the last five or six good night kathy if you go back and listen to the last um five or six then you know watch them or listen to them and then you'll know what we're talking about on this summer of savings but it's officially so the summer of savings is officially over okay we're doing the wrap up i'm going to tell you all how i did um, so that, you, you know, so you can see how I did with the summer of, uh, the summer of savings and I'm going to let you know how much I saved. And if we have time while I'm talking, I'll show you what I'm going to make for this week, which goes along with the summer of savings. It's not, I'm not really making anything, but we'll just chat about it for just a second. Okay. So for the summer of savings, we, this was a, we ended up doing this for, it was right, right at six or eight weeks. Let me see how many weeks it was. Eight weeks. So it was an eight week adventure for me. So here's how it went. And I want to know how yours went. If you participated in any or all of these, I want to know how yours went. So in chat number 279, we talked about saving energy in the kitchen. And we talked about things like not using the oven, not using the top of the stove, um, using, you know, like if you have an air fryer, which I'm going to always point the wrong direction. If you have an air fryer, like I have two here at work, I have two Simple Living Products air fryers. I have a Nesco pressure cooker, pressure canner, um, the microwave, things like that, toaster or a, not just driven like a to um, waffle iron something like that but to not turn on your stove avoid turning on your stove as much as you could go outside and grill maybe but just ways to save um, energy costs so I have a graph a graphic that I'm gonna have Jessica post when she posts the chat um, in the next day or two um, and I think this the graph from our, my utility company says it all um, I'll show you I'll show you the graph what it looks like so the tall bars are last year and the short bars are this year okay just for the last that's just for the last couple of months so but i do think the graphic though says it all um not using my oven so i don't think i turned my oven on i don't think i turned it on one time like i don't think i turned my actual oven on one time this summer um and I didn't really use the top of the stove very much. I tried to use some of the other appliances that don't put off as much heat. And if you go back and watch or listen to chat number 279, we talk about what some of those appliances are. But doing that, we saved an average. It, well, it reduced our electric usage in July and August. Um, uh, July of, uh, last year, we did. We used 1,275 kilowatts. This year, it was 884. In August, so far last year, it was 1,439. August, so far this year, is 994. So that was a significant reduction in our kilowatt usage. Um, we saved an average of $43 per month. One month was higher than the other two. An average of $43 per month this summer, even with this summer being some of the hottest temps recorded for that same time period. Okay that said a lot to me okay just not turning on those appliances this summer then and i know 
I know, Phyllis, right? Wow, I mean, I wasn't expecting that, okay? And I know $43 might not sound like a lot, but that's $43, $43, okay? Good night, Linda. Linda's got a scoop, so everybody tell her good night. Um, then, in chat number 280, my friend Laura from At Laura's Table told us her three favorite ways to save money at the store. And then you all came up with lots of fantastic ways to save money at the store. So I did a few of those. I shopped the sales. Um, I went at a different time so that I wasn't there when they were baking bread, making things that I was going to be tempted to buy. Okay. I mean, that one worked. So I was told, don't go when they're cooking rotisserie chicken. Don't go when they're baking bread. Don't go in, don't go at a time of day when they're making all of these smelly, smelly, yummy things and you end up buying them that you don't need. A, I didn't need them for my pocketbook and B, didn't need them, you know, for this. Um, and, and I didn't go when I was hungry. So I, I had something to eat before I went every single time. And I didn't buy anything that wasn't on my list. So those were the three things I did. I shopped the sales. I went at a different time so that I didn't go when they were cooking or making yummy smelling things. Um, and I didn't buy, well, four things because I didn't go when I was hungry and I didn't buy anything that was not on my list. My best guess is that I saved about eight to $10 a week. Um, and I had, I started that before we did our summer of savings. So I had been doing it for about 10 weeks. So I saved approximately $90. So if I, if it was an average of eight to 10, and if I start, and I started it a couple of weeks before this summer of savings started. So I saved about $90 doing that, $90 doing that. Well, that's our average weekly um, grocery bill. So I just made myself an extra week of groceries basically. Okay, and then in chat number 281, we saw a few ways to make our own food and in just money saved on grinding my own chicken breast. So thank you again, Julie. Thank you, Julie. And then thank you, Deanna, for, for reconfirming that and backing that up. Um, I saved $11. So just grinding my own chicken, nothing else. So I did make my own cream cheese. I did, I did make some of my, you know, some of my own things, but in just the uh, purchasing of fresh chicken breasts and grinding them myself, I saved $11 just in that. Okay, that's pretty cool. $11. Okay, and if then if I made a graph of my pleasure quotient over using food out of our garden, what we already owned, using what we already owned, um, having my friends and family share in growing, picking, prepping, and preserving processes, all of those processes. Um, that was unmeasurable, so I, I couldn't measure that. Um, and Vicky, so okay, I should have I should have sidetracked and said what to use to grind the meat. I did do some videos, and I'm going to try to put those together as a reel. I am not a reel. R e e l. Just heard a little thunder, so be prepared. Um, I'm not a reel, not R e a l, an R e e l expert. So I'm still working it out, but I did take some videos. But basically, what you do is you cut the chicken breast into approximately one inch cubes. I laid them flat on a cookie sheet, froze them for like an hour. They weren't frozen, but I chilled, extra chilled them for about an hour and then just put them in a food processor. And it was so stinking easy. And Julie and uh, Deanna both taught, you know, taught me how to do it. So um, that was how we did the chicken. And I, when I get that real R-E-E-L um, posted, I will definitely let you all know. But just sharing with my friends and family how to grow, how to pick, how to prep. We had so much fun. Um, learning how to use the wrong way, learning how, you know, everything's backwards for me. Anyway, learning how to use the Nesco pressure canner as a canner. I mean, we did, you can see up here, we did peaches, we did green beans, we did blackberries. I need to crack open one of the blackberries and see how they turned out. Um, and we froze things, you know, just doing all of that. I can't measure, I can't measure that amount of pleasure for that. But in chat number 282, we learned how to do all of those things um, by reducing, um, learn how to do all those things, but just by reducing food waste. And I'm going to put a value. So doing all of those things, prepping, picking, growing, you know, all of those things, um, we significantly reduced our food waste. And I'm going to put a price of over $60 saved on that one, just from not throwing things away. Okay. And I may, you know what, I'm going to take a few minutes and just go ahead and put this together just to show you all an example of that. So that was just from chat number um, 282 talking about how to preserve things and how to save things and how to reuse things like the um, just one example the um, when we were talking about um, you know using things up and not you know not throwing them away um, we um, 
uh, I had the kind of gangly looking tomatoes and I did the um, the end of season tomatoes that my mom used to like to make. And if you saw that post, it was on, I ate them on two tortillas. So I had just enough tomatoes. I mean, look, they were kind of, they were really gangly looking, okay? They were like end of the season normal me, like last year me, would have just chucked them out back or would have put them in the compost or something else. But this year, me kind of cut off their, you know, questionable spaces, you know, whatever. And I made some end of season tomatoes, which are, um, which are a recipe that my mom came up with. And there are that recipe is already on if you have an egg.com. Um, I did that, and um, oh my gosh, with some leftover uh, fat-free ricotta cheese on some tortillas and heated them up in the air fryer. Fantastic! That was the best thing I had in the three days that I did the um, the uh, shop your pantry challenge, which we'll talk about in a second. But just as an example, a couple of things that we had left over in the garden, and that's weird, like our zucchini, yellow squash, and cucumbers really didn't do a lot, like they didn't do a lot, but they're blooming again. And I don't know what is up with that, so we may yet get some more. But so I've got a yellow squash, a zucchini, um, and a cucumber left, and um, I have some tomatoes. So we had a few tomatoes left. So we're just gonna sidetrack real quick and make my salad for next week. Again, out of some things that we have left over. So when we were talking about, you know, reducing your food waste and um, reducing your food waste is a, again, it's a huge way. First of all, it was very satisfying to use things out of the garden, to come up with ways to preserve things, to try ways of preserving things that I had never, that I had never thought about before. Um, you know, and what did I say? That saved sixty dollars. I saved approximately sixty dollars <throat> just from not throwing things away. So some of the things, and sorry, that's so loud. Some of the things like the tomatoes, and um, you know, I had to cook them a different way. I had to make them a little bit different way than I normally would have, just to be able to use them up. But it was so nice. It was so nice not to throw them away. So this is just a yellow squash that's left. And just for the sake of time and your poor ears, I will not cut the whole thing up. I'll just, whoop, I'll just get it started. So it was a yellow squash. We've got kind of a ratty looking, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's kind of a ratty looking zucchini. You know, it's got some, it actually, the skin of the zucchini kind of looks like a, um, oh, uh, like a manatee. <laughs> it looks like, you know, I don't know. It looks like it had some, you know, had some visitors in the garden uh, that, you know, that kind of wrecked it up a little bit. But we had, so we've got a leftover zucchini. Um, and you know, and we've had this, so we've had these things roasted. We've had them, um, gosh, Amadi, we've had them cooked in the air fryer. We've had, I've eaten so many vegetables. So side note, side bonus to all of this is, not only have I saved money, but eating all of these vegetables and learning how to preserve all of these things and taking advice from people, you know, like um, like Debbie and from um, from Carol who do a lot of things like this, Deanna and Julie, to, you know, taking their advice um, on how to, you know, how to do some of these things. Um, consuming this many vegetables and adding back this many points from vegetables, I'm back to within, I am back to within eight pounds of being at my goal weight. So aside from saving money, okay, and talk about saving money. So once I get, once I meet that eight pounds, I mean, I'm like, I'm on the home stretch. Once I hit that eight pounds, and then I'll save even more money because I'll be back to being free. So I don't know if you all have ever been free, if you've ever, I don't know if you have, um, if you've ever made it to go and been able to go to, um, go to an in-person workshop and not have to, and not have to pay that is a wonderful and fantastic feeling. Okay, so I'll cut up the rest of that after the chat is over, but that is some leftover tomatoes, zucchini, yellow squash, and cucumbers. And I have this much leftover um, fat-free feta cheese. So I'm gonna throw that in there. So those are leftovers, so I'm not going to let anything go to waste. We're going to put the rest of the, the remaining fat-free feta cheese is going to go in there. Oops. So now that container is good and empty. Then I have some leftover craisins. Um, and these are 50% less sugar um, craisins. Probably more than I meant to put in there. 
But 50% less sugar craisins. I accidentally bought these one day. I didn't even know that I was getting them. Um, they have way less points. And this is quinoa that we made earlier in the week. So Kendall and I here at Casey Kitchen Center, we made quinoa. Wrong direction, Kelly. We made quinoa in the Nesco pressure cooker. And look how perfectly it turned out. If you can see that. So that is, so this is just leftover quinoa. Um, normally, I probably would have just thrown it away. So I used, we used this in the stuffed peppers that we made last week. Uh, the second batch of those, Kendall and I used um, leftover, we used um, some quinoa in that. And then I used some in some chili another day. So using up all of that. And then I have part of a bottle of G. Hugh sugar-free raspberry. Um, it's just been sitting in the refrigerator because I have like every flavor of G. Hughes um, salad dressing. So there's a lot of it. And actually I have on my, if you can read it, I have on my G. Hughes t-shirt today. Um, but yeah, so some of this dressing and this is the raspberry vinaigrette and it is sugar-free and it is delicious. It is delicious. Um, and I've still got some more... Um, yellow squash, zucchini, and again, cucumbers to cut up after we get off here tonight. But look how pretty this is. And this is not even, I mean, this is not a recipe. This is a, we just took, you know, what was left over out of the garden or what was left over from when you went to the farmer's market, left over from making stuffed peppers, you know, a half a bottle, you know, a bottle of, of half used salad dressing, um, you know, and this would have been so easy to let this go to waste, but look how pretty that is. That is so pretty. Okay, and I did not, I did not bring a fork, but we're still gonna try it. So this is G. Hughes sugar-free raspberry vinaigrette, leftover zucchini squash and cucumber out of the garden, some leftover quinoa, dried cranberries, some low, 50% less sugar dried cranberries, and the last of the feta cheese that was in the, um, that was in the refrigerator, Mm. and some tomatoes that's going to be my salad for lunch this week okay so see how easy that is took what five minutes six minutes and <clears throat> and we are reducing food waste okay so let me breathe for just a second because i ran through that one super fast okay so doing that not throwing stuff away using food that we had um, again, not throwing it away, using it up, figuring out some way um, to use it. That saved about $60 um, during this you know, process. It saved, saved me about $60. <clears throat> okay, and I can slow way down. What, well, what kind, I'm going to ask, because now I want to chop up the rest of this. What do you all what do you all do with your leftover food? So, so in order to reduce food waste, Let's just chat for a minute because we still have like 11 minutes um and yes so cindy wants to know if i like raw squash that she's never tried it so let me just show you okay i did not mean to turn this into an eating into an eating thing and i really wish that i had brought a fork over here but this is yellow squash this is raw yellow squash It's so good. I would totally throw that in. It's just a salad ingredient. Oh, good one, Carol. Good one. Carol says soup. I make a bunch every weekend with anything left over or going bad veggies. That is a perfect one. And Anita says try adding spices and make a different meal with her leftover with her leftovers. Perfect. That is perfect. And, oh, and Phyllis says she's never tried raw yellow squash either. It's, it's good. I mean, it's really, it's kind of bland. So I probably, you know, I don't know that I would, well, here, let's just try a bite. So here's yellow squash with nothing on it. It's just kind of a mild flavor. Actually, it's pretty good. I've never had it just, I don't think I've ever had it just by itself. Let's see, Debbie says she meal preps all of the ingredients not meals 
And so she can make different things with, oop, hold on. So she can make different, oh, oh, different flavored rice bowls. That sounds delicious. So what different flavors of rice bowls do you like to make, Debbie? While I make myself hungry, cutting the rest of this up. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, Debbie, Debbie and Carol, who have, and Deanna does too, have, they have some great ideas on things like that. Okay, sorry, I just got excited and wanted to cut the rest of that. Okay, so let me not run us out of time here. So the salad, great idea. Using the rest of the quinoa, great idea. I'm telling you, using wrong direction. Using, oh wait, hold on. Debbie says Greek pizza and taco bowls. Those sound fantastic. You know, are making me hungry because I haven't had supper yet. But using the Nesco pressure cooker um, for the quinoa, I'll have to tell you another day how to make that, but it made it so stinking easy. We literally rinsed it, put it in there, walked off, and then it beeped when it was done. Ta-da! And we had quinoa. So there was no standing there stirring over it. No, you know, you know, there's no big deal. And Carol says, if you spiralize yellow squash, it looks like spaghetti and is bland and mild, so just add sauce. That, yes, that is a perfect use of yellow squash. Okay, then, so that was $60 saved, not throwing food away. About $60 saved, not throwing food away. Then in chat number 283, we started the three-day pantry challenge, okay? And boy, howdy, was that one an eye-opener. Um, I did it for more than three days. And y'all already know that I found 15 individual bags of popcorn. Um, I found two large bags of um, Bob's Red Mill rolled oats. And those are expensive. I mean, I don't know, it's probably eight or $10, you know, for a bag of those. I found two big bags of those. Um, and I did it for way more than the three days. Uh, so much so that last week when I went to the grocery store, I was able to use a bag of change to pay for my groceries. Um, and between using duplicates, not buying much more than um, perishables, so I basically just bought perishables last week, and then not eating out, do you all want to guess in a week's time? So now I did it for more than three days, and I'm going to cut these up because I'm going to make you all guess. So I did the, I did the three-day Shop Your Pantry Challenge uh, for a week. So that's more than three days. But do you all want to guess between not eating out, um, using what I had, using up duplicates, do you all want to guess how much I saved in one week on that? And I want a couple of answers before I before I go back to this. Let's see, Debbie said, had the best shrimp fried rice with cauliflower rice Friday night, yum, with leftovers in the refrigerator. Okay, so how much do you all guess that I saved that week? Plus, I gave up some pretty interesting things. Okay, Carol says $50. I did come up with some pretty interesting things. Lynn says $30. So no eating out, used what I had, used up duplicates, had a lot of vegetables. Again, oh, in the week that I did that, again, bone, okay, Phyllis says $100. So side note, bonus, the week that I did the Shop Your Pantry Challenge, and uh, Debbie says 75, Leslie says 60. The week that I did that, I also lost two pounds, just so you know. So I saved money and I lost two pounds. Okay, so that week, over $80. Oh yeah, Pam was right on it. So over $80 in one week. So just not eating out, um, not, or in, you know, using up the duplicates that I had or, you know, or new things that I had, not buying any more duplicates and using enough things that we already had in our pantry to be able to just use a bag of change to get our groceries. I saved over $80 in that one week, okay? And lost two pounds. So I was super excited about that. Okay, this eight week adventure. So for me, it ended up being um, an eight, about an eight week adventure um, doing the summer, um, summer of savings challenge. Um, I don't know if any of you all participated or if you wanna start it in the kind of fall challenge or you know, whatever. But that eight, so that in that eight weeks, I lost, let me think, in that eight weeks, I lost a little over three pounds. It was like three and a half pounds. So it got me down to eight pounds within, you know, within eight pounds to go. And we saved approximately, so the total of all of this, the electric um, bill, the not throwing food away, 
the making my own chicken breast or not making my own ground chicken breast um sharing things using things at the garden um not going and getting extra things at the store saved our family oops, drum roll please so over eight weeks we saved approximately three hundred and twenty seven dollars what three hundred three hundred and twenty seven dollars what that is crazy. Plus, I didn't do a lot of extra driving around. I didn't even count how much I saved in gas from not driving around all these places, for, you know, from just using, you know, using this power and walking to the refrigerator instead of driving somewhere and getting food. I didn't even count that. So over 300, about $327. Um, yeah, Debbie, I just, yeah, I just said that. You, you beat me to it. Um, that does not count not getting gas to go to the store or to go, you know, any of these other places. So about $327. Anyway, this is something that I'm definitely going to put on repeat. And this is a habit that I'm definitely going to put on repeat. I mean, obviously I'm not stopping. So I'm still, you know, cutting up things to go in, um, to go in this big bowl. I mean, look how big this is. Oh Lord, I can barely pick it up. So just with the tomatoes, I'm going to add the rest of that quinoa, that leftover quinoa. I've still got a tiny bit of the um, cucumber and the zucchini left to cut up, but just using these leftover things, and this is delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, and Debbie, Debbie said I said it just as she finished typing that. But all of this, all of this is things I already had. So this is none, nothing bought new, things that we already had, things that were left over or things that were left over out of the garden or that were left over from something else. So none of this was a new purchase. And look, oh my gosh, look how big this bowl is. So that's gonna last me for days, for days. And look how pretty that is. So I'm gonna keep continuing this. I'm kind of liking this saving money thing because um, you know, I got other stuff I'd rather spend the money on. Okay, so how did you do? Did any of you all do the summer of savings? Did any of you all try any of these things to, you know, to save this week? I would love to know. I would love for you to comment, um, you know, post in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, go ahead and comment. If you're watching this later on YouTube, go ahead and tell me, you know, go ahead and post it in the comments. We would love to know. So as many things as I did here to save money, you all have so many more ideas. I mean, now I want to do Debbie's idea of, you know, of making ahead the rice so that I can have that prepared and ready to go just to add some different flavorings and have that to go. So I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to keep doing this. I've had a great time with this summer of savings. I hope you have too. Um, Oh, yep, and Carol did living off the land this week, and that's what Deanna calls it. I think it's so funny. So Carol did living off the land this week, and how did that work, Carol? Because we got like two more minutes, and you can talk about that. Let's see. Cindy said, first time, what is the start and stop time? So first time being here with the chats. If you're talking about first time with the chats, we start at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we end at 9 p.m., so we have like two minutes before we're going to wrap this up. Um, but yeah, if you all did the summer challenge, the summer savings challenge, let me know. Um, if not, you didn't have to end just because it's summer. Um, but I hope that you all will let me know how you did. I hope you'll let me know if you come up with any money saving ideas so we can try them here too. And I actually can't wait to try um, to dig into this salad um, next week. It is going to be fantastic. But thank you all so much again for being here. If you're watching this later on YouTube, go ahead and let that next video roll over. Um, I promise you'll enjoy it and it will explain some more about this summer of savings challenge. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that button down here to subscribe and do click that little bell to make sure that you know when the next video is posted. But looks like we have avoided the storm. Woohoo! Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for sending good thoughts this way um, so that we could avoid that. But you all have a great week and I will see you next time. Good night.